Good evening, gentle listeners, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production with your hosts, Bungling Bob. Oh, that's right. Right at the end of the last thing, we learned that if you stick the ground, it, it gives you a little... Yes, Pooples. so we can actually get ammo. And I don't know what happened. It used to be that slingshots, like, kill people in two shots. Last time when we were fighting, it took, like, ten shots to kill someone. <gasps> so what? <sighs> what did you do? What hey, can someone the... make a fire? Musky Mark. Yeah, whatever. Here's, here's some come. stench. Take that stench. And Wizardly Wade. Nice, man. It's me. Get off the bald. What? <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. I thought of it and I didn't think fast enough to think that I shouldn't say it. Sorry, sorry. This week, the covert compadres copiously cackle concerning canards of concealed cantrips and chants. Yes, it's time for Wade's Secret Words. Please prepare thy notepad and enjoy the show. The word is mistake. Our next topic. This does not have to be personal, but just stories we have. Dating mishaps. Dating mishaps. Well, like like early date, like you know, going on a date with somebody before you're like together. I feel like we've covered this in a small way. Are you sure you aren't pulling a bob over I, here? I told a story about how I almost killed a girl, so I feel like you did. If I can get credit for that, that was kind of my biggest. I got. I could probably. I maybe have another one. Uh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. What do you got, Mark? Um, I mean, I've I've gone on some bad dates. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's really it. Like, I guess bad dates is maybe a better title for it. That's all. That's fine. Mm. I I gotta be honest. I did not go on that many dates. Uh, I had like one girlfriend before eventually getting together with Mandy, who I'm now married to, and and I went on like a couple handful of dates with a couple other people. I would say the most painful experience I have was probably from high school. And then there's this girl that I thought was really cool. And like, we were kind of friends. We were kind of in the same group. She was in band and I was in band. So we were kind of knew each other. And like, I got up once and I asked her out and we had an, like a nice dinner at this Mexican place and it was cool. Mm. And the whole, the whole idea was I was starting to like court her, ask her out in the lead up to a dance. And I had this idea. It's like, I'm going to, um, ask her to the dance, but it's going to be like a big thing, right? It'll be, it'll be cool. It'll be romantic, I guess. And. I didn't realize how far away she lived. This is in the days before your phone could tell you. So I kind of map quested how to get from my house to her house. And I was like, I'll just ride my bike. How far could it be? She lived on like the edge of our school district, like way out there. Like she went to another high school the next year because turned out she was in another area. So I rode my bike long, hot ride, like hot summer day riding out there easily an hour plus bike ride not going very fast but you know i got there i'm like sweaty dying i get i take a minute to like recover but still by the time i actually ring the doorbell i'm i'm like sweaty and like oh you know after a long bike ride and um her dad answers and i'm like hey is she uh, can i talk to your daughter <laughs> and he's kind of like ah hello it must be the young man who took her to dinner. Uh, sure, come in, come in, I guess. And, like, you know, he goes and he gets her. She's upstairs. Mm. And I, all this, I wasn't, like, you know, head over heels in love or anything. But I thought this girl was really cool. And I thought it'd be really cool if we dated and went to the dance. And so I had this, you know, I sort of built this up in my head. And she comes down. And I had, I don't even remember what it was. But I had, like, made, like, handmade, like, a card and, like, a sign sort of thing. It was really cheesy, right? It's like high school kid trying to be funny and cute and stuff and then she comes down the stairs and i'm sort of holding stuff but i'm still sweaty <laughs> she comes down and i'm like hey i rode my bike sorry do you want to go to the dance with me <laughs> <sighs> and like awkward silence where she says she sort of stops like halfway down the stairs and i'm just standing there in the you know in the entryway just <sighs> <clears throat> like looking up and was really, she was really nice about it and really sweet. She comes all the way, the rest of the way down the stairs. It kind of, you know, gives me that look in her eyes of kind of like, oh, oh, buddy. Ah, my guy. And uh, and she was so sweet. She even like kissed me on the cheek and was like, listen, I'm just not interested in going to the dance. It's not you. It's cool. And then I had to ride my bike an hour home carrying a card and a sign. I think I threw them away at some point. I don't know. I was pretty dejected. This is a lot of effort. And I also didn't consider what I would look and sound like after my, riding my bike that far mm. and being, you know, kind of a big out of shape kid, if I'm 100% honest. 
But like, I didn't do anything that stupid. I thought it was sweet. And we had gone on a date. We had a nice dinner and had some, you know, shared some nachos. But that's like the only other dating experience I have aside from the story I already told where we almost killed the girl in the parking lot with the heart condition. <laughs> that one was a lot worse, dude. <laughs> it's hard to compete with that. It is. Uh, for me, I had a terrible date when I was uh, in high school. I think it was freshman year, honestly. Uh, there was this girl in band. I might have told you guys this, but I don't think I told this on the show. There's this girl in front of me. I have some woodwind player. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, whoa. No, no, I remember. I'm just leaving out She's details. She's one of them woodwinds. <laughs> But I uh, just like a uh, name aside, make up a name. Uh, Graceffalus. What? Graceffalus. Graceffalus. Yes. Graceffalus. <laughs> Graceffalus the Griffin. Anyway, uh, so I work up the courage to eventually ask Graceffalus out on a date. Uh, and I knew that there was something there. There was a spark of connection because Graceffalus kept turning around uh, anytime we stopped playing to talk to me. And, uh, you know, Graceffalus would look me in the eye and smile and I'd be like, oh. Boy, Chrysopolis. And uh, so we <laughs> went on like this you two date. Are for each other. She turned around. You turn around all the time. You have a play button for that. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. She turned right. around. Uh-huh. Pretty much. And that was the start of everything. <laughs> So, but this is before I have a car, right? This is like before either of us have a car. I think we're like 14 at the time. You know, awkward, oh, like me riddled with acne, her a giant griffin. Um, just like it's it's awkward teen years. Uh, so I ask her out on a date. And to get this date underway, we have to coordinate with our parents to drive us both oh, yeah. to wherever we need to go. And I was like, let's go to King's Island. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, we can ride roller coasters. I love roller coasters, you know. And then we we get there. And it wasn't until we get there that Graceffalus tells me that Graceffalus has severe motion sickness. Oh, oh no. So Graceffalus cannot ride <laughs> oh, any no. rides. <laughs> at king's island mm. so i'm like uh, so i'm deflated instantly i'm just like oh oh okay chrysophilus i uh, um we could uh we could go uh there's like this movie thing you know the spongebob like 4d experience did either of you ride that one it was like a, a race car thing before that wasn't it mm -hmm. it probably was i think it was uh, like but a fighting we, thing i remember like a fight i remember like a, some kind of combat or, anyway yeah, yeah i know what you're talking about It'd be great it's just a theater we're in chairs it won't be that bad no motion sickness it's motion chairs. Yeah, that thought came to my yeah. mind, but I was going to let you do the grand reveal. It's the worst kind of motion sickness possible. So you got the video there, you got the 3D glasses, I think, and then you got this thing jostling you around. Uh, and, and the buckles don't unbuckle until the show's over. So Graceffles is just there. <laughs> Like, it's visibly turning shades of green as we're watching Spongebob go through his crazy antics. I get a, I get, the show stops, Graceffalus immediately unbuckles, flaps her enormous wings and flies out of the theater, uh, probably to throw up. I slowly, sheepishly walk out of the theater, find Graceffalus sitting on a bench with, like, head in both hands, you know, mm. just like, mm. <laughs> and then, um... We ordered ice cream, and that was our trip to uh, Kings Island, and we, uh, I don't think we even spoke a word after that ever again. Yeah, me and Graceffalus. Beautiful. Graceffalus the Griffin. Mm -hmm.